Hello, I am Josh Blaser, and welcome to another play of Shovel Knight here on Game Wisdom. This is episode 2, and tonight we're going to be attempting to beat the second section of the game, which is going to be these three levels here. Alright, so, last time we did the base introductions of Shovel Knight, why the game is such an interesting mix of old and new school design, and part of that are the numerous homages to classic games like DuckTales, Mario, Mega Man, among others. And we're going to see a few more of those tonight. Alright, we'll go with Treasure Knight. It's shoveling time, exactly. Alright, let's see here. Everything looks good. Alright, so obviously we're in the second section of the game now, so things are going to get a little bit more complicated. Now this type of war mechanic was seen in Mega Man, I think starting with Mega Man 2, I believe. The shell bouncing, I'm not, my memory is failing, I don't remember what that is from. But using the war to enhance the player's jump ability like that was definitely Mega Man 2, the Bubble Man stage. Which you can see there's a lot of homages with using bubbles and whatnot here. So you can see those sparkles coming from the pit. That is where we use the fishing rod. We just wait. Oh. Oh. We can use him to basically refill the chalice if we need to, but we're pretty good there. Just gotta deal with these annoying things. Alright, you can see those blocks up there, which we need to break using this shell. There we go. <coughs> Alright, so this part's interesting because these enemies are invulnerable. So this is more about careful dodging than it is doing damage. And our reward? Alright. Where are we going? Oh! New type of enemy, he's using the, looks like an axe of some kind, as a projectile. And that is similar to the Castlevania, uh, let me see, I think it was considered the Great Axe or Regular Axe weapon, with that overhead sw swing. Alright. Just gotta deal with him. There we go. Oop, wanna avoid those spikes. Ooh! <laughs> I bounced right on top of them. Alright, back to the start. You gotta always be really careful of your pogo jumping, and that's something that you really have to get into your head. Which is a lot different from a game like DuckTales, where it kept we were pretty much forced to keep pogo jumping in order to avoid everything. Alright, I'm just gonna skip by him there. There is my remaining money. And we just gotta deal with him. There we go. And the checkpoint was of course right there. Alright, we got platforms that swing straight up. This is another old school game, but I can't remember off the top of my head which game actually had this first. But, nevertheless, we have to avoid them. What the hell is that? So we have a new enemy over here, a very annoying one, who keeps summoning those projectiles, but we can finish them off easily. And what do you have for us? Gotta get all that gold for the upgrades. Alright. Another new enemy, very simple, you just have to hit them at their weak point, which is the tentacle head. Huh, thought I could shoot myself all the way up there. There we go. And a reward was an apple. I missed something up there. Ok, 
Okay. The horror path usually has the better stuff. A little simple puzzle here, just gotta deal with these guys. Throw my face locket. More of these annoying and vulnerable guys. But we made it to the next checkpoint. Now the black screen again indicates that we're coming close to a mini boss. And let's see. Yep, that would be a mini boss. So this kind of situation where you're being chased by an enemy, this is straight from Mega Man 2, the Dragon Boss. Where you pretty much are forced on this track to avoid his projectiles while making some very tricky platform jumps. Now this part though is entirely original to Shovel Knight, with you actually fighting the boss on these platforms. In Mega Man 2, you just had to keep dodging and then use like a boomerang to finish him off. So this is a sort of way that Shovel Knight pays homage while doing its own thing. Alright, and our reward is our own throwing anchor, so this gives us that sort of great axe weapon from Castlevania. Alright, some more annoying enemies there. So you can see that ability to attack straight above you gives your rank, your attack range a little bit more mobility. And that's another important thing from a lot of the older games, of changing how your attacks will go. All right. Again, we're dealing with these bubbles. This annoying guy. I got a golden fish, it looks like. Okay. This is a new platform here. What happens is you hit it, and it shoots off like a missile. Alright, back over here. And just gotta deal with these guys quickly. Again, if I touch the spikes, it's instant death, so I gotta be really careful about that. And these are the platform's official introduction to the level, which you have to use them to make your way across here. And I think this is another Mega Man-inspired challenge of having to use these moving platforms. Alright, there's that annoying knight again. Coming to another checkpoint, there it is. And a carrot. Alright, so we have these platforms that will go down the second you get underneath them. Okay. Got them. Alright, so the challenge you have to time your jumps for when they're coming up while setting them down. As you can see, we have another little hidden area right here. And this will be another place where the anchor comes in handy. But I can just ignore him and go straight for our reward. Nope, we'll avoid that. There's some good old health for us. <laughs> I love using the shells as a little projectile there. We should be coming to the end of the level now. First we got this final test of using these, which is having to quickly destroy the walls while staying on like that. If you're not used to the range of your shovel, this could be a little tricky. So again, I'm going to pause for a quick second. This is where we have another framing section to indicate we are at the boss. 
So once again, we'll hit that, and it is boss time. Alright, so he uses his grappling hook to control his movement while hovering in the air, or hovering in the water, which makes him very similar to the Bubble Man fight, where a lot of this level has had its inspiration from. So the challenge, of course, is avoiding everything. Oop. And there we go. Oh, there goes his anchor. And another boss defeated, and we're back at the campsite. With this next town coming up, this is where I can score some pretty decent upgrades, which actually adds some more moves to Shovel Knight. Okay. Oh, and we have a little guy on the map, too. But first, let's go to the new town. Okay. So this guy lets me get armor, so I can change basically my basic stats. And this guy lets me upgrade my shovel. Right, I want to take the charge handle. So now I can charge up my attack. And that is definitely a Mega Man staple, having the charge attack do a little bit more damage. Okay, what do you want? Let's get that. Magic or music scroll. Alright. Oop. Then I gave him some money. Yeah, let's pay him. Boss time. So as you can see, my little charge attack does more damage. But I do have my chows I can use to help. Nice reward for that. <laughs> okay, that was a little weird guy there. I wonder if I can talk to him up there. And I can also upgrade. Let's see. Eh, not yet. But maybe I'll grab one of the weapon upgrades. There we go. Now I basically have a little attack that shoots out when I'm at full health. And this is another classic game mechanic of basically giving you a special attack when you're at full health. A lot of different games made use of this. But again, my mind is blanking on what was the first game to feature that type of mechanic. Uh, can't reach it just yet. See, it'll probably come to me later on. I know Star Tropics did something like that. Alright, now we have two guys wandering the map. Let's see with this guy first. These are basically little mini bosses that we have to fight. 
So you can see my little ground spark right there. Alright, gotta avoid those attacks. Trying to hit him with the charge attack because it does more damage. Uh -oh. And of course, I can use my Chalice as an emergency here. Gives me a few seconds of vulnerability, which should be enough to finish him off. There we go. My war is a lot more full, which I'm going to use to buy the other chalice back of the first town. Oh, and I got some more gold. Alright, he's gone. So we'll head back here. I can't upgrade my weapon or my health anymore. Now, where was the person who was selling the chalice? I think it was this guy. There we go. And now with that, I can go back to the Triple King <coughs> and get both chalices filled up. Uh, like I said, I like to get the invulnerability one and the full stats one. There he is. So we'll choose invulnerability. And refill. Alright. Take out this boss character next. Big guy. Mm. Alright, big guy. So this guy using his whip to swing around, this is Castlevania, definitely. You can see I'm using my ground spark ability for having full health, which only works while I'm at it. You can see his rope is blocking his atta my attacks, so we need to hit him like so. Oh, got me with his whip. Oop, he looks pissed. Oh, now it's night time. Definitely an annoying fight because of the frickin' lightning he keeps summoning. But one more, there we go. Got some more gold as well. This is him for all his items. Alright, so with those little distractions out of the way, we can get back to completing this section. First, we'll take on this little challenge here. Alright. So this is a little test to see how well you can maneuver around to get as much rubies as you can. Resources, perfect. Because a lot of the high up stuff is going to cost a lot of gold. And doing these little gem challenges is the best way to get a lot and get a decent balance when you start spending that money. Alright. And 
and there we go. <coughs> That's a lot of good gold. We'll be making use of that probably once we hit the next section. Alright, we'll go to our next area. This time we'll go Mole Knight. Alright, we got a little fire guy here. Okay. Gotta avoid the fire, and we're just gonna make our way over to this treasure chest. We have another fishing spot here. Oh, another triple guy. This music is definitely selling Mega Man again, which I think is pretty good because the Mega Man was what had I might say had a lot of really great music for it. All right, so then you can only him in the back. Another challenging homage to the older games of having him you have him either in the back or the top or stuff like that. All right, Apple. Okay. That thing is definitely annoying. And these darker blocks are a lot harder to damage to. So now we have this little guy who can bounce on his back. And again, it's another moving platform challenge. So I have to keep ahead of him at all times. Or I'll be left stranded. This is where I can use my supercharged shovel to break through those blocks a lot easier. Okay. <coughs> oh, another new guy. And see another pattern of using the fire to shoot out like that. There we go, I can use my supercharged shell to deal with him quickly. Checkpoints should be right here. As always, it's good to have checkpoints after major challenges or annoying fights just to reward the player and they don't have to do it again. Right, these guys are very annoying. They only pop up when you get close, like so. But I can use them as pogoing ability, as long as I don't get hit by those things. Another new knight. Well, I can just ignore him. <laughs> I'm falling to the lava. Alright. So these blocks will basically explode if I hit any of them in the chain. But we see a secret area up there. Okay. So the challenge is you have to use these guys as pogo material, but you only have a few seconds when they pop up before they sink back down in. Here we have a bit of a one-way track. If I mess up on any part of that pogoing, I would be dead. Now we have to repeat it again. One, two, three, four. Definitely a good point of no return example. You basically have to commit to it or die trying. All right, and here we go. get the health for my super shovel attack. Again, I gotta be careful where I'm pogoing or I'm gonna kill myself there. Okay. You can see how much awesome it is at having this little range attack. So a little puzzle here, I gotta figure out the best way to break these blocks and not get killed in the process. Alright. So we have some new material, this bouncy stuff, and we have our another relic upgrade. Knuckle, dust knuckle. So this allows me to basically move through the air as long as I'm hitting something. As you can see, like that. Yeah, I got an achievement too. Another decent item, just for its ability to send you forward. As you can see, the first part was the easy way. Now we have to do this test. If I miss, I'm going to die into the lava. But we made it. Now 
All right, we're back on the main path. So now we have to use this bouncy stuff to maneuver around. This is another classic type challenge that we see in a lot of older games. Of basically having a bouncy surface that you have to m interact with and avoid obstacles while bouncing. Alright, found a golden fish. Alright. So these little goo balls, I can move around them like that. But I have to keep them on those like green vine-like things. Alright, got rid of the lava, that's great. But it's only temporary. There's another little bit of a challenge, forcing the player to basically time their movement if they want to get all the good stuff. Okay. Let me switch back to this. And another simple puzzle of figuring out how to get the up get the slime over here where I can use it. Oh! Fortunately, we have a very quick path back. And I can reclaim some of that gold once we get back over there. Okay. There it is. There we go. Back to normal. Alright, so this time we have to use both of them. There we go. So this would be where I could use the knuckle, dust knuckle, to sort of shoot myself back. Oh! Oh, wait, there's another item I can use that actually does that. You'll get like a little propeller item later on. Alright, just another quick one here. Sorry about the mistakes folks, it is a little tricky narrowing while making these tr uh, troublesome platforming sections. All right, and we are back. All right, another little test here to get that music scroll. Okay. There we go. There's a achievement for getting all the scrolls in the game. We'll see if I can actually get them this time around. So this little test is I cannot use my pogo jump or I'm gonna break those platforms and kill us. So just gotta kill him the old fashioned way. Oop, and this guy once again. Alright, so I can actually just exploit his little attack there. But we'll jump down after this next one. So this will be a good place to use the dust knuckle. Basically shoot myself across like that. So long as I can hit something while I'm in there, I'll keep moving. <coughs> me. So I'm going to pause again because this is another good type of level design to talk about right here. As you can see, I'm once again having to deal with this beetle and bouncing along him. Now we did this earlier in the level, which could be considered the test or the introduction of the mechanic. Now to wrap up this level, this is the expert variant or essentially the final trial. So if I can do this, my reward is of course being the level. And it's good to have like two versions of a similar challenge, one being the easy safer one and then having the real test come later. So here we go. Okay. As you can see, this is already a lot more challenging as we have a lot, and we have different obstacles to deal with, including the falling lava and these annoying, whatever they are, flaming birds, I think. Oh, 
and that time he wasn't going to wait around for me. Okay. And our reward again is we come to the final checkpoint, I believe. So the boss should be right here. one respects the shovel. Alright. So this guy just keeps on swimming along or bouncing out of the walls, as you can see. Okay. Where are you coming out? Okay. Now you can see he's definitely a bit more piss. Oop. And here he comes yet again. This is definitely another old school challenge of forcing the player to avoid or break through blocks to get to the boss. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to go for another achievement. Alright. So when he comes back, I'm going to try it. Okay. Coming vulnerable. There we go. I think that was the achievement. Yeah, there we go. Gotta do some achievement whoring whenever you have a chance, folks. Alright, victory once again. Two down, one to go for this section. Alright, is he gonna dream again? No. Okay, one more to go, but first let's go back here and refill our chalices. Okay. I'm just going to go back here and see if I can buy one of the armor upgrades. I think I got... Okay, this just to make it quicker to break through treasure box. And... I'll take the dynamo mail. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright. So we're no longer our classic show night blue, but we have a new power that activates, well, I think, whenever we do two uh, pogo, or shovel smashes, they're called. Alright, so now we got this fire that chases after us whenever we land. This is definitely another classic type of platforming obstacle, and I think this was, again, featured in Mega Man. So long as you keep moving, you're safe. But of course, stopping or getting caught by someone is going to cause damage. Now, I'm bringing through these blocks a lot easier thanks to that Dynamo Slice upgrade I picked up. Yeah, break those rocks. That eagle's going to be a pain, you can just tell. Take my phase locket. Another fishing hole. I just gotta try it because you never know what you're gonna find. There we go, golden fish. And the old standby moving platform challenge. So obviously the trick is you have to take this one all the way from the top. So we got a lot of hidden areas here. Ah uh, yes, combining the challenge of having to time your jump with the fact that you can't stand around and wait. So you have to time it from back here. Alright. Oop, messed that up. Let me repeat that. So I'm going to say right there we go. So we had to do another committed jump there. I had to time it just right. Got our music, she has a reward. Now we just got to make our way back. 
I could also cheat and use the phase locket to basically stand there as long as I want, or as long as I have magic. Okay, got more health again. So you can see the what that item or that upgrade does, or this armor, is every time I do a pogo slash, it automatically charges my charge slash ability. And the best part is I don't need to hold and slow myself down. Ah yes. Take that. I think this is yet another Mega Man challenge right here, having to use these platforms when they're in the mid when they're in midair. Okay. Having them alternate like this to force you to time your movements a lot more. And now we have the spikes to add to it. Okay. And we're out. Okay, gotta time this. To, there we go. Mm, that spire is definitely annoying up there. When you play on hard mode, you get less health upgrades, which makes these parts a lot more challenging. Oop, don't want to break my checkpoint. These little goo things again. Take that bird. And being knocked backwards when you take damage, that's been something I've seen in so many 2D platformers. The only ones I can think of that didn't have it was Mario. Alright, so we have to use the bird, I believe. Or I think we have to just repeat this part. Unless I can move him over here. Come on, you. Get a little closer. Nope. Now, here's the bit of the rub. I could repeat this section with the up with the item that I can use to shoot myself forward, or I can die and basically repeat it. I'd rather not force you guys to watch me go for that, so I'll just come back later with the requested item to make it easier. Alright, another black area, which means we have a boss. So this guy, it's all about just constantly hitting him. He turned into like some kind of a yeti-like creature. Then he comes back to normal. There we go. All right, so now we have the upgrade of the platform of the not staying in one place challenge, and that's dealing with these fires that are just going to come out on their own. Alright, another fishing spot. Up, oh, him again. Alright, so what makes this extra challenge, you have to watch where you're standing on these narrow areas. Oop. Or that happens, of course. See, the levels have gotten a lot bigger, we have a lot more checkpoints. So I can cheat a little bit and use my phase locket to get across this pretty easily. There we go, got him. The old standby of alternating death traps. Okay, so this little trick is you have to jump just as they're coming up to avoid them. There we go. And again, we have these alternating traps. And pretty simple. Alright. Yeah, this kind of goo clone. And he just showed up quickly here to show that we're going to now be fighting more of them. But our charge, our ground attack, 
should make quick work of him. <laughs> All right. Oh, gotta watch out. Ooh, that spider guy is just a pain. We're almost at the boss. Huh? Oh, I forgot to hit the button. There we go. Another little fish for help. Oh uh, yeah, so again, we had this classic frame of the checkpoint right in the middle, black background, which can only tell us we're at the boss. Dropping down, this is seen in Mega Man and other 2D platformers. Alright. So this guy's little trick is just keeps jumping at you. While throwing his mis mixtures. Gotta be careful as those things will explode. This kind of com uh, multiple popping. This is another thing, I think we saw this in Mega Man a lot, having the bosses sort of hop around. But we got him anyway. And that takes care of the second boss, or the second section of Shovel Knight. So our reward will get a little dream sequence again. There's Shovel Knight's friend, Shield Knight. You can use the knuckles to break through their shields, like so. Back. Oh, oh am I gonna get her? Uh, yes. And our reward for completing the section, we have another meal ticket, so we can raise our health up yet again. Alright, with that, we unlock the third area of, Dun of Shovel Knight. First, we'll get back here and get our upgrades done. Then we'll upgrade my magic too. Let's see, what's the limit that she'll do? Yeah, that's enough for now. Oop, got more guys on the map. Uh, this little challenge area here. This is basically the test of using the dust knuckles. Have to keep going forward and not fall into the lava. Right. Oh! Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so now we have to time it to avoid the lava. Okay, so these annoying birds are breaking the platforms. Okay. Now they're mixing pogo jumping with the dust knuckle to add a little bit more complexity. That's always good level design, adding more challenges and wrinkles to the same basic mechanic. So let's see what this does. One, two, three, and we are home free. There's another music scroll. 
and another challenge level completed. So this is a challenge level, which we can come back to at any time. And we have two knights over here. This is a shortcut back to the town, like so. Okay, so I think with that we're going to begin to wrap things up. As you can see, we once again have three knights or three stages blocking us to the next section, as well as these two wandering foes to deal with. Obviously, there's going to be more challenges and more upgrades to find. And let's see, I'll just do this one right here quickly. Alright, we got, once again, having to deal with these enemies in the dark. I love the charge attack, just because it does so much damage, and I can use it to break through their shields like that. Damn moles. Alright, gotta time my jumps. And good old phase locket to get across there. All right, that was quick. All right, with that, <coughs> ooh, excuse me. With that, we are going to wrap up this episode of Exploring Shovel Knight. For episode three, we'll complete this section of three bosses, and we'll make our way ever closer to the end of the game. Thanks for tuning in, and as always, if you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It'll help me out a lot. And make sure to check out Game-Wisdom.com for posts and podcasts relating to game design and the industry, as well as our ongoing Patreon campaign to help secure monthly funding that I can use to help pay the bills and get things done while still focusing full-time on great content like this. So, thanks again for tuning in, and I will see you real soon. Take care, everybody.